Hey everybody! Hi! Welcome to my bathroom. I'm your host Stephen Colbert. You're watching a very special social distancing edition of The Late Show, or as I now call it, The Lather Show with Scrub and Colbert. My first guest tonight, as you can see, is Mr. Bubble, followed by a musical performance by the legendary duo Head and Shoulders. Thanks, guys. Now, you'll notice I'm in my bathing suit, and I'm coming to you from a secret, ultra-secure tub. I was going to use my rich person bunker, but it turns out the guys from Parasite are living down there. Really nice folks. Now, the big story tonight is all of you people. People all over America have hunkered down in their own houses to ride out the coronavirus. The CDC is saying this might go on for the next eight weeks. So get comfortable and try to look on the bright side. You're finally going to get a chance to binge watch all that toilet paper you bought. And you better watch it, Jack, because I'm coming for it. I did not plan well. The government, remember them? The government is telling all this to avoid human contact indefinitely. And on behalf of the socially anxious everywhere, let me just say, way ahead of you. I've been avoiding human contact since before it was cool. Now keep in mind, this is not the first time humanity has had to sequester itself to prevent the spread of infection. Did you know, I just found this out, that Sir Isaac Newton retreated to his home in the countryside when the Great Plague of 1665 hit London. And it was during that isolation that he discovered calculus and came with came up with his theory of gravity. And that's only because his kids were stuck at home whipping apples at each other's heads. Shakespeare also had to work from home to protect himself from a plague in his time. That's when he wrote King Lear. And of course, his most famous tragedy, Romeo and Pornhub. It is a freaky, freaky time, I'll give you that. And I'm sure a lot of you were worried, but if you're watching this from home right now, know that you're doing the right thing. I'm at home, every member of my staff is home, because we need to slow the spread of this virus. Epidemiologists call this flattening the curve. But based on my current level of inactivity and stress baking, I definitely will not be flattening my curves. Let me show you what I made last night. Look at that. Look at that damn thing. Look at those. Fl look how flaky those ridges are. There's a pear and almond cream tart. My best. Now, flattening the curve refers to this graph right here that illustrates the spread of the coronavirus. If we all stay at home and keep our distance, we won't get this huge spike right here in the number of people getting sick all at once. You will, however, see a huge spike in the number of people finally cleaning their stoves. You're not gonna believe what you find in there. The important thing is to keep the number of cases below this dotted line. See that little dotted line though? Okay, that is the line at which our entire healthcare system becomes overwhelmed. And at that point, people might have to stay at home and treat themselves then mail themselves an $8,000 medical bill. Now Trump and his coronavirus team held a press conference today, and I gotta say his tone was dramatically different than previous days. Therefore, my administration is recommending that all Americans, including the young and healthy, work to engage in schooling from home when possible, avoid gathering in groups of more than 10 people, avoid discretionary travel, and avoid eating and drinking at bars, restaurants, and public food courts. Do you hear that? Don't get together in groups of more than 10 people. This important information coming from the Coronavirus Task Force, which has 21 members. This is actually a good math lesson for all those kids now being homeschooled. Question, if the Coronavirus Task Force has 21 members, but groups aren't allowed to contain more than 10 people, how many more months are we gonna have to be eating Chef Boyardee? In fact, the question on everyone's mind was, how long is this going to go on? People are talking about July, August, something like that. So it could be right in that period of time where it, I say wash, it washes through. They think uh, August could be July, could be longer. Okay, July or maybe August. That sounds bad, but keep in mind, he did not specify which year. Trump thinks the White House is doing just a great job. There's been a tremendous uh, amount of the, the, the way they're working together. They're working hand in hand. Yes, to control the spread of this virus. They are working hand in hand, tongue in mouth, sneeze in face. 
As recently as yesterday, Trump was saying he had this virus under control. And today? You're not, you're not saying it's under control, right? I'm not referring to it, meaning the... Yeah, if you're talking about the virus, no, that's not under control for any place in the world. That is as comforting as a parent tucking in their child. Relax, kids. There just aren't monsters under your beds. There are monsters under all the beds all around the world. And I don't have any of it under control. Good night. But Trump was adamant that he's doing the best he can with the hand he was dealt. When we have a future problem, if and when, and hopefully we don't have anything like this, but if there is, we're going to be very, uh, we're going to be starting off from a much higher plateau because we were at a very, very low base. We had a, uh, a system that was not meant for this. Yes, some idiot disbanded Obama's pandemic response team. We should really look into whoever was after President Obama because that guy screwed the pooch, which, by the way, is another way the virus can spread. The important thing is Trump was focused on the future. If everyone makes this uh, change or these critical changes and sacrifices now, we will rally together as one nation and we will defeat the virus and we're going to have a big celebration all together. Yes, it's true. We will all celebrate the inauguration of anyone else. Now, in order to self-isolate, Americans have been stocking up on essentials, but now people are lining up to buy guns and ammo. No, you can't shoot a virus. The thought of frightened Americans arming themselves to the teeth scares the crap out of me, and there's no toilet paper left. Though cards on the table, I too have given in to the hoarding impulse. Here we go. Yes, I bought a can of beans. Yeah, there's literally hundreds of beans in this can. One of them's gotta be magical. That's just math. No. There are some professional hoarders, uh, like that guy in Tennessee who has over 17,000 bottles of hand sanitizer in his garage and nowhere to sell them after Amazon cracked down on coronavirus price gouging. It's ironic that he has all the hand sanitizer in Tennessee, but no one will ever want to shake his hand again. Now, in an ideal world, our elected leaders would urge us to follow the advice of experts. Instead, California Representative Devin Nunes said this. Well, there's a lot of concerns with the economy here because people are scared to go out. Uh, but I will just say, one of the things you can do if you're healthy, uh, you and your family, it's a great time to just go out, go to a local restaurant. Yeah. Likely you can get in, get in easily. Uh, they're cleaning go, off the you know, Go to your local, uh, local pub. Okay, but to be fair, nothing gets people to avoid going somewhere like knowing they might run into Devin Nunes. It's one thing to give bad advice, but some leaders went so far as to boldly set bad examples. This morning, New York Mayor Bill de Blasio went to work out at his local YMCA. Come on, Mr. Mayor. Don't you know that during an epidemic, it's fun to stay at your H-O-M-E, because if you don't, we'll be D-E-A-D. -E you can talk to yourself, you can water your plants, you can walk around without pants. And scene. Another man uh, doing it wrong was Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt. This weekend, Stitt tweeted, eating with my kids and all my fellow Oklahomans at the Collective OKC, it's packed tonight. Stitt's tweet went viral. Of course, not as viral as everyone at that restaurant did. He deleted the tweet, but his office doubled down saying the governor will continue to take his family out to dinner and to the grocery store without living in fear and encourages Oklahomans to do the same. A true Stitt for brains. Governor, don't bring Oklahomans down with you. It's one thing to stay on the Titanic. It's another thing to say, why is everybody getting on those dumb lifeboats? Come on, the string quartet still pumping out the jams. Some businesses chose to shut down like Disney World, which made the prudent decision to close. But for some reason, they still held one last fireworks show and it was packed. Doesn't a last show sort of defeat the purpose? It's like finding out your partner has herpes and then saying we should stop sleeping together after one last night of blistering passion. The point is, at this time of national peril, we all have to do our part. And by do, I mean don't. We all have to don't our part. And there is no country in the world more prepared for that than the USA. It turns out Americans weren't lazy couch potatoes this whole time. All that sitting on our asses and watching TV was actually training to save the world.
So to paraphrase the immortal words of John F. Kennedy, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask how many episodes of Love is Blind can you watch in one sitting? We'll be right back.